Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Sonal Bhutra. With me is Vivek Iyer. Turning out to be a good Monday for the Bulls for sure. The Nifty is up 105 points. Midcaps are powering through. That index up 7 tenths of a percent. And this is coming despite the mixed handover that we got from the Wall Street. The IT stocks didn't do well, which is something happening with us also as well today, Vivek. You are absolutely right. You know, whole of last week, IT and pharma, the defensive didn't do too well. And today, that trend uh, is continuing to a certain bit. Uh, quite a lot lined up on our show today. Let's start off with the top headlines. Nifty trades firm near 25,900, led by auto stocks. Mid-cap stocks continue to outperform with the index above 60,500 levels. Vodafone Idea inks a deal with Nokia, Ericsson and Samsung for network gear worth $3.6 billion, even as the Supreme Court has rejected uh, the review of AGR dues. Experts remain circumspect about its outlook. Concord slips in trade after Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley downgrade the stock. The brokerage is cited disappointing earnings and sharp cuts in the company's JNPT tariffs as some of the key reasons. Fusion Microfinance falls 10% as the company may have to make a higher e-sale provisioning of 500 to 550 crore rupees in quarter two versus 348 crore rupees in quarter one. Brokerage firm Investec downgrades the stock and cuts target price to 300 rupees. Umber Enterprises files up in trade as Jefferies initiates a buy rating on the stock. They also expect more than 30% volume growth in FY25 for the domestic AC industry. All right, those are the top headlines. And as we speak, Nifty Bank has hit another record high across the earlier level of 54,066.1. Crossed it and retreated a bit, but there's nothing really to complain about. We do have uh, it at the day's high right now, five tenths of a percent higher as we speak. And PSU banking names, they are contributing and how to the gains that we are seeing right now. This is followed by the CPSC index, which is doing really well in trade today as well. So some comeback that we are seeing in the PSU banking space uh, and PSUs as well. Uh, we usually talk about mid caps on the show, but suddenly there's so much action in the large caps that we are seeing that we have to mention that. So it's a 106 point gain on the Nifty as well. For other names, of course, we'll go across to Hormaz in just a bit, but largely looking like a strong day across sectors. Across sectors are doing very well. Even the pharma pack, quite a lot of the you know larger names have actually made a comeback today. A few stocks are you know that have hit intraday lows uh, include names like uh, Divis as well as uh, Sinjin. Uh, you know some slight negative news to appears to have come over there. Those stocks are seeing a bit of selling pressure. But apart from that, you know some of the other pharma names today have picked up steam. But whole host of other stocks uh, will be on Hormaz's radar. Hormaz is standing at the wall with all the top movers in the broader end of the markets. The Nifty Bank has hit a record high, but the broader markets are not to be left too far behind. And one of the stocks that you mentioned among the top gainers within the broader markets is Amber Enterprises. After a very bullish commentary that the management shared, and now at the highest point of the day, 11.5% higher now on Amber Enterprises. What's also at the highest point of the day is Phenolex Cable, 7% higher there. Another good day for Kalyan Dwellers, 8% higher on the stock ahead of the festive season. And Glenmark slightly off the highs of the day, but still trading with gains of 4%. PSU banks, as you mentioned, are contributing to the gains on the banking front. All constituents of the PSU bank index are up in the green. The Bank of Maharashtra, after those flows that came in from the FTSE rebalancing on Friday, continuing from where it left off, 7% higher there. Punjab and Sindh Bank, Indian Bank, all of them seeing very healthy gains. The other sector that's doing well today is real estate. And even there, most of the stocks of the index are trading with gains led by Godrej Properties, 9% higher now on Godrej Properties. DLF2 packing in a punch, 8% higher as is Soba with gains of 9%. Stocks doing well on the back of volumes. And SBFC Finance is one of them, 20% higher now on the stock. VIP Industries too having a very good day today, 8.5% higher. Adani Total Gas after the news flow that came in on Friday, 7.5% higher. And Restaurant Brands Asia almost 5% gains in today's session. Lastly, stocks not doing well in today's session in a market like this. Fusion Micro is one of them, 11.5% lower as we speak. As Sterling and Wilson also off the highs of the day now has slipped into the red and Eris Life Sciences also trading with gains of all, uh, losses of almost 6.5%. Back to you guys. Okay, some interesting names out there. Amber Enterprises up around 14%. And what's happening with the royalty space? It's a one-way move across the space. Thank you, Hormas, for joining in as always and taking us through those names. Uh, let's now welcome Ashish Kyal from Wave Strategy as advisors for a technical check on the market. Ashish, good afternoon. What's the next important level to watch out for on the Nifty? Uh, what are your bets? 
Hi, afternoon to you and all the viewers. If you look at overall trend of the market, it is buy on dips market. We can clearly see that there has been sector rotation. Uh, we can see that the banking sector has now started outperforming, which was IT earlier and pharma earlier. And that's a very positive sign. Bank Nifty, which was far away from the lifetime highs, has now moved to the lifetime high levels uh, with no much, not much of a resistance on the upside. Uh, if you look at the index, uh, on uh, Nifty uh, has a very important uh, support, which is going to be around 25,700, 25,720 levels. Any dip from here, I would suggest, is a buying opportunity on a short-term basis. We can expect a target of gain levels around 26,002, and possibly I'm looking at Nifty to be touching that 26,450 levels also. So I'm bullish on the index as a whole. Uh, strong momentum is there, sector rotation is there, the advanced decline is healthy, uh, mid caps are catching up, bang nifty lifetime, so everything looks to be bullish to me. Good afternoon, Ashish. Uh, so what are your topics for the day? What is it that you're recommending today? Uh, the first pick is going to be on uh, Aditya Billa fashion. We can clearly see the stock has shown a very strong breakout in today's session uh, with a strong upside move. Took that support from the 10 and 20 days average and looks like starting the third wave higher. So since um, Aditya Billa fashion can be the first stock pick, uh, creating the long positions there. We can expect a target on the upside for the stock around the levels of uh, 400 and, and we can expect a support for the stock to be around 329. So that's the first pick. And the next pair of one is going to be central banks. We can clearly see uh, th uh, until the last week, it was the private banks that were rallying. And now PSC banks and I have started picking up the steam in today's session as well. We can see Union Bank and many other uh, PSC banks picking up. And looks like central bank after a lot of consolidation over the past one year is now going to give a strong breakout on the upset. So central bank can be a buy. Uh, aiming for the target of 61 and stop loss can be maintained at 50 uh, sorry aiming for the target of uh, around uh, uh, 67 and stop loss can be maintained at 59 levels and if 67 is taken out we can expect the targets of around 74 as well over here all right thank you ashish for joining in as always with that we'll slip into a break when we come back we'll get you more on the markets we we'll also connect with amin pirani of jp morgan and we'll discuss the auto sector stay tuned Welcome back to Midcap Radar. Well, one pocket of the market that's done very well over the past six months has been the auto space. There are quite a lot of disruption having coming in over there, especially in the two-wheeler, three-wheeler space. So let's put the spotlight on the auto sector. Amin Pirani, the head in the automobiles and transportation research from JP Morgan, joins in from the JP Morgan India Investor Summit. Uh, good afternoon, Amin. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, first up, uh, give us a sense of how exactly are you looking at the four-wheeler market in India. There appears to be a little bit of moderation in PV demand, but how are you looking at on-ground trends? Sure. Thank you and, uh, uh, you know, um, good afternoon and thank you for having me uh, on, on the show. Uh, as far as passenger vehicle and four-wheeler demand is concerned, I think one thing we need to remember is that unlike other categories, the passenger vehicle sector was already 20-25% higher than pre-COVID levels as of fiscal year 24. So given that base, uh, it was expected that some kind of moderation uh, would be there. Uh, YTD, if I look at the trends, we are growing at low to mid single digits. The start to the festive season um, has, uh, is looking good. Uh, and there's an expectation that uh, in the month of October and possibly you know, the first half of November, we could see very strong growth on the base of uh, last year's festive, which was also a, a, a good number. But at the same time, we need to remember that the growth rates that we saw in the last two to three years they have to be moderated a bit. And there are some other categories within autos which could actually outperform. And what would that other categories be, I mean, Anything in particular? Would it be two-wheelers or the CV cycle that's turning for the better now? Yeah. So two-wheelers is a space where, you know, we have been, uh, you know, quite bullish for a while now. Uh, two-wheelers was the last category to start recovering. Uh, the main cyclical recovery started in two-wheelers during the second half uh, of the last uh, financial year. Uh, and we do expect that given that two-wheelers are still below pre-COVID levels, it is likely that over the next few quarters as well, 
two wheelers could continue to outperform uh, passenger vehicles. Uh, commercial vehicle is somewhere in the middle. Um, we reached pre-COVID levels uh, sometime last year. Since then, it has been you know a bit of a stagnation. Uh, but as we start getting into 3Q and 4Q, uh, it is likely that we will start to see some uh, 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 a good base. Uh, and on that base, we could start to see uh, some growth. Uh, we also need to remember that on commercial vehicles, uh, OEMs have also decided to reduce discounting, focus on sustainable, profitable growth, and hence the volume growth needs to be viewed in that context. Okay. Uh, so we will see growth, but maybe in some of the categories it will be lower than last year. Uh, I mean, I know you wouldn't talk uh, individual stocks, and I'm not even asking for that. But, you know, recently we had the comment coming in from Rajiv Bajaj that Bajaj Auto Stock could touch that 20,000 mark. It was on CNBC TV 18 that he said that. I see that's an overweight for you. Um, uh, is this something which is working out for the two-wheeler industry overall, something that you can talk about specifically on what could the future triggers be going forward? Um, see, if you look at the two-wheeler uh, sector, uh, you know, uh, like I said, post-COVID, uh, that segment was uh, slow to grow, and hence valuations across two-wheeler companies were uh, trending on the lower side vis-a-vis -vis other sub-segments. But if you go back, you know, pre-COVID levels, if you look at any 5, 10, 15-year horizon, two-wheeler growth has actually been in line and in some cases slightly better than passenger vehicles. So from that point of view, I think if you look at uh, two-wheeler companies, there is no reason why uh, valuations for them should be at a discount. And uh, what we have seen in auto sector uh, you know, for the last uh, you know, several years is that um, uh, if a category is growing faster than other categories, and within that, if companies uh, are growing faster than their peers within that category, so any company which shows market share gain ends up uh, seeing a valuation re-rating, and companies which are losing market share on a relative basis see a valuation derating. Uh, and two-wheelers uh, as a space, uh, you know, is in a sweet spot right now. Uh, got that, Amin. Amin, uh, moving on, a uh, couple of questions. Number one, how are you looking at, uh, you know, both Indian auto companies as well as some of the auto ancillary companies that are export facing. So names like, you know, Tata Motors or Mother Sansumi or Bharat Forge, uh, you may not be able to comment Outside, you know, you have seen quite a lot of guidance cuts come by as far as OEMs are concerned. Uh, so are the volumes for these companies, is business for these companies uh, at risk? Sure. I think, I think we need to deconstruct the guidance cuts which have come from the global automotive companies like you mentioned. Uh, at, a part of that is actually the slowdown in China. Uh, and when I look at, uh, you know, uh, companies, at least in the auto component space, the exposure to Europe and U.S. is generally higher than it is to China. It's not that China is not important, but the exposure is relatively lower. Uh, the second thing is that, you know, if you look at the details of the uh, guidance cuts from a lot of these uh, global OEMs, in a lot of cases, it is to do with supply challenges because some supplier is having some issues or because there are some recalls in some specific uh, parts. And hence, you know, uh, uh, while this may lead to short-term disruption for the Indian auto component companies, I do not see that, you know, as a big challenge uh, over a three to four quarter period. Lastly, what, you know, I would, I would like to add is that most large automotive component companies in India have started diversifying into non-automotive and industrial areas like aerospace and defense, uh, which are new categories for them. They increase the addressable market. And hence, you know, if you put all of this together, yes, compared to last year, the kind of growth that we saw, we might see some revenue growth moderation. But because uh, the cuts itself are specific to certain reasons, plus because of the non-auto additions that a lot of these companies are doing, I think over a three to four quarter uh, period, we do not see uh, much risk to uh, uh, expectations. Okay, so I mean, what are we expecting? The non-auto side of business that they're expanding, uh, by when will that start showing in the books? Until then, will we continue to see uh, some impact on margins? Generally, I'm asking, once they add this new portfolio, what happens to margins? Sure. So again, uh, generally speaking, um, uh, aerospace, defense, and all these non-automotive areas, margins tend to be equal or slightly better for most of these companies. 
and hence we are not expecting uh, these uh, this diversification to be uh, margin dilutive but i think the larger point is that as your revenue uh, base becomes more and more diversified uh, the cyclicality or the volatility on your uh, revenue growth and your earnings comes down and then over a period of time uh, you know the valuation starts to re-rate because the business is not as cyclical as it used to be for some of the companies within the automotive component space the non auto bid is now as high as 30 40% for some other companies it is less than 10% but over the next say 2 to 3 years uh, we expect this number to go up higher for for most of these companies i mean you know one more question from our side you know what we want to understand is as far as q1 was concerned on the back of uh, much higher volumes and also lower steel prices you actually saw operating leverage kick in and a lot of the companies especially two wheeler names saw record high ebitda levels uh, can this trend sustain q2 onwards and for the rest of fi25 i think as far as 2q is concerned uh, commodities still continue to be relatively benign i think they are still being supportive uh, and we'll have to see you know how it plays out over the remainder of the year but for now commodities seem quite benign um, the other part is that while two wheelers have been slow to recover post covid in fact if you look at the last several quarter margin performance of all these companies they have actually been inching up so what we've seen in the two wheeler space is um, you know slow but steady price hikes to offset inflation um, and uh, uh, a discipline as far as that is concerned and because demand continues to be quite strong uh, finance availability has continued to improve these companies have not been in a situation where they have to you know give higher incentives or higher discounts and hence i do believe that uh, margins uh, across these companies can continue to remain uh, at these levels and if commodities continue to be supportive in second half and in fiscal 26 then maybe there is a possibility of uh, some improvement as well okay uh, i mean last question before we let go of this interesting conversation you track the tire space as well uh, uh, how is that space looking like right now considering the commodity prices and the scenario that we are in and that shift that's happening to ev uh, does that improve the profile overall for these players okay so i'll try and answer you know in two parts first of all uh, yes we have seen that in the last two quarters especially commodities uh, have moved up quite sharply rubber uh, even synthetic rubber natural rubber most of the commodities have moved higher and what happens in the tire segment especially on the replacement side which is the larger part of the revenue base price hikes happen gradually so what we are seeing right now in the market is that commodities from the peak have started to moderate down slightly we are starting to see some decline uh, price hikes are happening but they have not yet caught up i think the september quarter could also continue to see uh, some pressures but starting december quarter and march quarter assuming that commodities don't go up again uh, price hikes could start to catch up and we could start to see margin recovery again uh, in uh, in in the tire sector um, i think as far as evs are concerned the interesting thing is that unlike a lot of automotive component segments which are dependent on engines uh, tires is actually agnostic so actually whether ev share goes up or not you will continue to need tires uh, in fact uh, since evs are heavier uh, and they need uh, you know less rolling uh, resistance uh, more fuel efficiency uh, because of the weight uh, tire companies have an opportunity to upgrade and improve the mix going forward so evs uh, at worst is a no non event for tires in a best case scenario it can be a, a ways of improving mix and improving margins over a period of time No that's exactly what I meant to ask will it improve margins for them because most of these companies have been quite bullish on the EV opportunity of course the demand for tires won't go away maybe the realization per kit could so that's what exactly I wanted to understand thank you so much for joining in today with all those insights and your take on the auto space uh that's the word coming in uh, from JP Morgan that's their auto call but for now we'll slip into a short break when we come back we'll get you more on the markets and also talk about skipper it is buzzing in trade that's our mid cap spotlight stay tuned
Welcome back. Well, markets picking up pace. Nifty is above the 25,900 mark. Midcap's doing well as well. And this is our special segment, Midcap Spotlight. Mamakshi will focus on Skipper. It is buzzing in trade. Mamakshi, what's the news? Well, Sonal, uh, Skipper is definitely up and away in the trading session today and that is because Axis Securities has initiated coverage in this counter with a buy rating and a target price of 600 rupees per share which implies a nearly 30% upside from the current market price. Now, keep in mind that their rationale uh, revolves around a strong order book. They, 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 they say that the company has a very healthy order book of around 5,900 crores. Additionally, they also have a bid pipeline of nearly 18,000 crores out of which 11,500 crores are from export markets itself. Itself. The management is expecting the export contribution to rise to 50% of the order book as compared to 14% now. Given the kind of demand that they're seeing, they're also, uh, they're also investing in capacity expansion. They already have the largest engineering capacity in India and with a 90% utilization and they're expecting to add nearly 25%, that is 75,000 tons by the first quarter of the next financial year. Additionally, they have plans to further increase this capacity by the same quantum, 75,000 uh, tons in FY26 itself. Given these factors, capacity addition by the first quarter is expected to contribute to an additional revenue of 800 to 1000 crores in FY26. They are also expecting the polymer segment's revenue to grow to 1000 crores in the next three years. Net working capital for the company is also expected to remain under control as the company is not exposed to discounts which have a comparatively weak financial position. Overall, Axis expects uh, revenue uh, CAGR of almost 25%, EBITDA for 30% and uh, net profit CAGR of almost 55% from FY24 to 27. They are also expecting the EBITDA margins to improve from 9.74%. Uh, 9.7% in FY24 to 10%, 10.5% uh, and 11% gradually from FY25 to 27. So given those factors, Access Securities has a buy call, big thumbs up coming in from them and resultantly the stock is surging higher. That's right, Mamakshi stock higher by over 14%, so strong up move today. But with that, it's all the time we have on this edition of Midcap Radar. We leave you with all the markets and all the key indices trading strongly in the green. Your stocks will be returned.